the prophet Zephaniah in the first chapter, God says he's going to search out and find those people who are stagnant in spirit. Now, like I said, our Father, the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, who is not a man that he should change. That's what it says in 1 Samuel 15. Yes. And his son, Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and yes, forever, as it says in Hebrews 13, is all about changing us. Yes. He doesn't change, but all of this, this here and now, is about him changing us. It started with him changing us from being among the walking dead to give, having eternal life. We've been changed from the bondage of sin to the freedom of the Spirit. He's been changing us from the turmoil of this world to a peace that passes understanding. God wants to change us. He says, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. It's about being transformed. It's about being changed. And by the way, understand that that is connected to presenting ourselves a holy sacrifice acceptable to God. In 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Just like I said, right? But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3, right? Now here's the great promise. And if you don't know this, write it down. This is one that should, that should fill your heart with joy. Paul wrote to the Romans, Romans 8, 29, and he said, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. But you may have noticed that I haven't achieved it yet. But if you've noticed that, one of the things you should do is be convinced and rejoicing about the fact that I, am being changed. Yes. I am more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. And that is not a statement of boasting. That is a statement of confidence in the work of the potter on this old clay. What he began, he is able to complete. And he is molding me and shaping me, changing me into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. It is about change. Change is the, is, is the aggressor to tradition. Yes. Tradition is we do it this way, we've always done it that way, and we're comfortable doing it that way. I want to tell you that a number of years ago, uh, while ministering around England, I went into a church. And a church that I had, had been to a number of times and had preached in a number of times, and they invited me back. And I went in, and I, by the way, I don't, I don't pre-plan things, and I don't go do it to fulfill my purpose. I, I promise you, I do everything in my power to be led by the Spirit of God. So I went in, and this church had a tradition, as many churches do. They had a plan. They would have, you know, the, the music group would come up and do a few songs, and then somebody would come up and do the announcements. They would take up an offering, then they would send the children out for the children's school, and then the pastor or the guest speaker would get up and give a sermon. Well, this particular day, we got there, and services hadn't quite started. And the pastor walked up. He was going to call the music group. And I stood up, and I said, it's time for me to minister. I said, it's time for me to speak. And he looked at me, and he didn't quite know what to say. Okay. So he said, okay. So I got up. Now, none of that has taken place yet, right? I got up, and I said, before I start, I'm going to ask everybody in this room, this, uh, the, the, that was in their church building. So I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I want everybody to stand up and go sit someplace in this building that you've never sat before. Then I said, and I also want you to sit next to somebody that you've never sat next to before. Well, ooh, my, 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 my. It's like, what do we do? Do well, I mean, do? The, the squirming, the sweating. I mean, now, the thing is... But they did it. They did it. And I... Some people say I'm intimidating at times. I don't think it was because I was intimidating. I think 
I think there was a presence of the Holy Spirit that was testifying to the truth of what I was saying. So it was an uncomfortable moment, but people did. They got up, and they moved around, and then they sat down. And I preached about change. I preached about the fact that God brought us into that room that morning for one purpose and one purpose only. I mean, the purpose is to glorify him, but glorify him, the potter, by allowing him to make us change from glory to glory into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. And by the way, the children didn't leave. And by the way, the children were as blessed as the adults. And by the way, I never got invited back to that church. <laughs> Because I, I broke the tradition.